Adi Shankara pronounced a -K or Shankara, was an early 8th century Indian philosopher and theologian who consolidated the doctrine of Advaita Vedanta. He is credited with unifying and establishing the main currents of thought in Hinduism. His works in Sanskrit discuss the unity of the Atman and Nirguna Brahman, Brahman without attributes. He wrote copious commentaries on the Vedic canon, Brahma Sutras, principal Upanishads, and Bhagavad Gita in support of his thesis. His works elaborate on ideas found in the Upanishads. Shankara's publications criticized the ritually oriented Mimamsa school of Hinduism. He also explained the key difference between Hinduism and Buddhism, stating that Hinduism asserts, Atman soul, self, exists, while Buddhism asserts that there is no soul, no self. Shankara traveled across the Indian subcontinent to propagate his philosophy through discourses and debates with other thinkers. He established the importance of monastic life as sanctioned in the Upanishads and Brahma Sutra, in a time when the Mimamsa school established strict ritualism and ridiculed monasticism. He is reputed to have founded four mathas, monasteries, which helped in the historical development, revival and spread of Advaita Vedanta of which he is known as the greatest revivalist. Adi Shankara is believed to be the organizer of the Dashanami monastic order and unified the Shanmata tradition of worship. He is also known as Adi Shankaracharya, Shankara Bhagavadpada, sometimes spelled as Sankaracharya, Adi Sankaracharya, Sankara Bhagavadpada and Sankara Bhagavadpadakarya. Biography Sources There are at least 14 different known biographies of Adi Shankara's life. Many of these are called the Sankara Vijaya, while some are called Guru Vijaya, Sankarabudaya, and Shankarakaryakarita. Of these, the Burhat Sankara Vijaya by Satsuka is the oldest hagiography but only available in excerpts, while Sankaradig Vijaya by Vidyaranya and Sankara Vijaya by Anandagiri are the most cited. Other significant biographies are the Madhavya Sankara Vijayam of Madhava, c. 14th century, the Sidvalasya Sankara Vijayam of Sidvalasa, c. between the 15th and 17th centuries, and the Keralya Sankara Vijayam of the Kerala region, extant from c. the 17th century. These, as well as other biographical works on Shankara, were written many centuries to a thousand years after Shankara's death, in Sanskrit and non-Sanskrit languages, and the biographies are filled with legends and fiction, often mutually contradictory. Scholars note that one of the most cited Shankara hagiography by Anandagiri includes stories and legends about historically different people, but all bearing the same name of Sri Shankarakarya or also referred to as Shankara but likely meaning more ancient scholars with names such as Vidya Sankara, Sankara Misra and Sankara Nanda. Some biographies are probably forgeries by those who sought to create a historical basis for their rituals or theories. Adi Shankara died in the 33rd year of his life, and reliable information on his actual life is scanty. <inaudible> <inaudible> Birth dates The Sringeri records state that Shankara was born in the 14th year of the reign of Vikramaditya but it is unclear as to which king this name refers. Though some researchers identify the name with Chandragupta II 4th century CE, modern scholarship accepts the Vikramaditya as being from the Chalukya dynasty of Badami, most likely Vikramaditya II 733 CE. .Several different dates have been proposed for Shankara. 509–477 BCE, this dating, is based on records of the heads of the Shankara's cardinal institutions Mathas at Dvaraka Pitha, the Gavadana Matha and Badri and the Kanshi Pitham. According to their records, these monasteries were founded in Kali 2593 BCE by a person named Adi Shankara. The successive heads of the Kanshi and all other major Hindu Advaita tradition monasteries have been called Shankaracharya leading to some confusion, discrepancies and scholarly disputes. The chronology stated in Kanshi Matha texts recognizes five major Shankaras, Adi, Kripa, Ujj Vala, Mukha and Abhinava. According to the Kanshi Matha tradition, it is, Abhinava Shankara. That Western scholarship recognizes as the Advaita scholar Adi Shankara, while the monastery continues to recognize its 509 BCE chronology. 44–12 BCE, the commentator Anandagiri believed he was born at Chidambaram in 44 BCE and died in 12 BCE. 
6th century CE, Talang placed him in this century. Sir R. G. Bandarkar believed he was born in 680 CE c. 700 c. 750 CE, late 20th century and early 21st century scholarship tends to place Adi Shankara's life of 32 years in the first half of the 8th century. According to the Indologist and Asian religions scholar John Collar, there is considerable controversy regarding the dates of Shankara, widely regarded as one of India's greatest thinkers, and the best recent scholarship argues that he was born in 700 and died in 750 CE. 788 to 820 CE. This was proposed by early 20th scholars and was customarily accepted by scholars such as Max Muller, Macdonald, Pathak, Dusan, and Radhakrishna, and others. The date 788 to 820 is also among those considered acceptable by Swami Tapasyananda, though he raises a number of questions. Though the 788 to 820 CE dates are widespread in 20th century publications, recent scholarship has questioned the 788 to 820 CE dates. 805 to 897 CE, Venkateswara not only places Shankara later than most, but also had the opinion that it would not have been possible for him to have achieved all the works apportioned to him, and has him live 92 years. The popularly accepted dating places Adi Shankara to be a scholar from the first half of the 8th century CE. Topic. Life Shankara was most likely born in the southern Indian state of Kerala, according to the oldest biographies, in a village named Kaladi sometimes spelled as Kalati or Karati, although some texts suggest the birthplace to be Chidambaram in Tamil Nadu. He was born to Nambudiri Brahmin parents. His father died while Shankara was very young. Shankara's Upanayanam, the initiation into student life, had to be delayed due to the death of his father, and was then performed by his mother. Shankara's hagiography describe him as someone who was attracted to the life of sannyasa hermit from early childhood. His mother disapproved. A story, found in all hagiographies, describe Shankara at age eight going to a river with his mother, Shivatarika, to bathe, and where he is caught by a crocodile. Shankara called out to his mother to give him permission to become a sannyasin or else the crocodile will kill him. The mother agrees, Shankara is freed and leaves his home for education. He reaches a Saivite sanctuary along a river in a north-central state of India, and becomes the disciple of a teacher named Govinda Bhagavatpada. The stories in various hagiographies diverge in details about the first meeting between Shankara and his guru, where they met, as well as what happened later. Several texts suggest Shankara schooling with Govindapada happened along the river Narmada in Amkarashwar, a few place it along river Ganges in Kashi Varanasi, as well as Badari Badrinath in the Himalayas. The biographies vary in their description of where he went, who he met and debated and many other details of his life. Most mention Shankara studying the Vedas, Upanishads and Brahmasutra with Govindapada, and Shankara authoring several key works in his youth, while he was studying with his teacher. It is with his teacher Govinda, that Shankara studied Gaudapadiya Karika, as Govinda was himself taught by Gaudapada. Most also mention a meeting with scholars of the Mimamsa school of Hinduism namely Kumarila and Prabhakara, as well as Mandana and various Buddhists, in Shastrarth an Indian tradition of public philosophical debates attended by large number of people, sometimes with royalty. Thereafter, the biographies about Shankara vary significantly. Different and widely inconsistent accounts of his life include diverse journeys, pilgrimages, public debates, installation of yantras and lingas, as well as the founding of monastic centres in North, East, West and South India. Philosophical tour and disciples While the details and chronology vary, most biographies mention Adi Shankara traveling widely within India, Gujarat to Bengal, and participating in public philosophical debates with different orthodox schools of Hindu philosophy, as well as heterodox traditions such as Buddhists, Jains, Arhatas, Sagatas, and Karvakas. During his tours, he is credited with starting several Matha monasteries, however this is uncertain. Ten monastic orders in different parts of India are generally attributed to Shankara's travel-inspired sannyasin schools, each with Advaita notions, of which four have continued in his tradition, Bharati Sringeri, Sarasvati Kanshi, Tirtha and Asraman Devaraka. 
Other monasteries that record Shankara's visit include Jiri, Puri, Vana, Aranya, Parvata, and Sagara, all names traceable to ashrama system in Hinduism and Vedic literature. Adi Shankara had a number of disciple scholars during his travels, including Padmapada, also called Sanandana, associated with the text Atma Bada, Sureshvara, Tudaka, Satsuka, the Vidara, Siddhvalasayati, Bodhendra, Brahmendra, Sadananda, and others, who authored their own literature on Shankara and Advaita Vedanta. Death Adi Sankara is believed to have died aged 32, at Kedarnath in the northern Indian state of Uttarakhand, a Hindu pilgrimage site in the Himalayas. Texts say that he was last seen by his disciples behind the Kedarnath temple, walking on the Himalayas until he was not traced. Some texts locate his death in alternate locations such as Kanchipuram Tamil Nadu and somewhere in the state of Kerala. Topic. Works Adi Shankara's works are the foundation of Advaita Vedanta school of Hinduism, and his doctrine, states Sengaku Maeda, has been the source from which the main currents of modern Indian thought are derived. Over 300 texts are attributed to his name, including commentaries Basia, original philosophical expositions and poetry Stotra. However most of these are not authentic works of Adi Shankara and are likely to be works of his admirers or scholars whose name was also Shankaracharya. Piantelli has published a complete list of works attributed to Adi Sankara, along with issues of authenticity for most. <laughs> <laughs> authentic works Adi Shankara is most known for his systematic reviews and commentaries Basiyas on ancient Indian texts. Shankara's masterpiece of commentary is the Brahmasutrabhasya literally, commentary on Brahma Sutra, a fundamental text of the Vedanta school of Hinduism. His commentaries on ten mukya principal Upanishads are also considered authentic by scholars, and these are, Basiya on the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, the Chandogya Upanishad, the Aitareya Upanishad, the Taitariya Upanishad, the Kena Upanishad, the Isha Upanishad, the Katha Upanishad, the Mandaka Upanishad, the Prashna Upanishad, and the Mandukya Upanishad. Upanishad. Of these, the commentary on Mandukya, is actually a commentary on Madhukya Karakas by Gaudapada. Other authentic works of Shankara include commentaries on the Bhagavad Gita, part of his Prasthana Trei Basya. His Vivarana tertiary notes on the commentary by Vedavyasa on Yoga Sutras as well as those on Apastamba Dharma Sutras Basya are accepted by scholars as authentic works of Adi Shankara. Among the stotra poetic works, the Dakshinamurti stotra, the Bhajagavinda stotra, the Sivanandalahari, the Karpata Panjarika, the Visnu Satpadi, the Haramide, the Dasa Slaki, and the Krishna Staka are likely to be authentic. Shankara also authored Upadesa Sahasri, his most important original philosophical work. Of other original Prakaranas, Prakarana monographs, treatise, 76 works are attributed to Adi Shankara. Modern era Indian scholars such as Belvalkar as well as Upadhyaya accept 5 and 39 works respectively as authentic. Shankara's stotras considered authentic include those dedicated to Krishna Vaishnavism and one to Shiva Shaivism, often considered two different sects within Hinduism. Scholars suggest that these stotra are not sectarian, but essentially Advaitic and reach for a unified universal view of Vedanta. Adi Shankara's commentary on the Brahma Sutras is the oldest surviving. However, in that commentary, he mentions older commentaries like those of Dravida, Bhartar Prapancha and others which are either lost or yet to be found. <laughs> <laughs> Works of doubtful authenticity or not authentic Commentaries on Nri Simha Purvatatapaniya and Shveshvatara Upanishads are attributed to Adi Shankara, but their authenticity is highly doubtful. Similarly, commentaries on several early and later Upanishads attributed to Shankara are rejected by scholars to be his works, and are likely works of later scholars. These include Kashataki Upanishad, Maitri Upanishad, Kaivalya Upanishad, Paramahamsa Upanishad, Sakatayana Upanishad, Mandala Brahmana Upanishad, Maha Narayana Upanishad, Gopalatapaniya Upanishad. 
However, in Brahmasutra Bhasya, Shankara cites some of these Upanishads as he develops his arguments, but the historical notes left by his companions and disciples, along with major differences in style and the content of the commentaries on later Upanishad have led scholars to conclude that the commentaries on later Upanishads were not Shankara's work. The authenticity of Shankara being the author of Vivekakudamani has been questioned, though it is so closely interwoven into the spiritual heritage of Shankara that any analysis of his perspective which fails to consider this work would be incomplete." According to Grimes, "...modern scholars tend to reject its authenticity as a work by Shankara," while "...traditionalists tend to accept it." Nevertheless does Grimes argue that "...there is still a likelihood that Sankara is the author of the Vivekakudamani." Noting that it differs in certain respects from his other works in that it addresses itself to a different audience and has a different emphasis and purpose. Aparaksha Anubhuti and Atmabhada are also attributed to Shankara, as his original philosophical treatises, but this is doubtful. Paul Hacker has also expressed some reservations that the compendium Sarva Darsana Siddhanta Sangraha was completely authored by Shankara, because of difference in style and thematic inconsistencies in parts. Similarly, Gayatri Bhasya is doubtful to be Shankara's work. Other commentaries that are highly unlikely to be Shankara's work include those on Uttaragita, Shiva Gita, Brahma Gita, Lalita Shasrahana, Sutta Samhita and Sanya Bhasya. The commentary on the tantric work Lalita Trisati Bhasya attributed to Adi Shankara is also unauthentic. Adi Shankara is also widely credited with commentaries on other scriptural works, such as the Vishnu Sahasranama and the Sanatsujatiya, but both these are considered apocryphal by scholars who have expressed doubts. Hastamalakya Bhasya is also widely believed in India to be Shankara's work and it is included in Samadha edition of Shankara's works, but some scholars consider it to be the work of Shankara's student. Topic. Themes Using ideas in ancient Indian texts, Shankara systematized the foundation for Advaita Vedanta in 8th century CE, one of the six orthodox schools of Hinduism founded many centuries earlier by Bhadarayana. His thematic focus extended beyond metaphysics and soteriology, and he laid a strong emphasis on pramanas, that is epistemology or means to gain knowledge, reasoning methods that empower one to gain reliable knowledge. Anantanand Rambachan, for example, summarizes the widely held view on one aspect of Shankara's epistemology before critiquing it as follows. According to these widely represented contemporary studies, Shankara only accorded a provisional validity to the knowledge gained by inquiry into the words of the Sruti Vedas and did not see the latter as the unique source pramana of Brahmajnana. The affirmations of the Sruti, it is argued, need to be verified and confirmed by the knowledge gained through direct experience Anubhava and the authority of the Sruti, therefore, is only secondary. Sengaku Maeda concurs, adding Shankara maintained the need for objectivity in the process of gaining knowledge Vastatantra, and considered subjective opinions Purushatantra and injunctions in Sruti Kodanatantra as secondary. Maeda cites Shankara's explicit statements emphasizing epistemology in section 1.18.133 of Upadesa Sahasri and section 1.1.4 of Brahmasutra Bhasya. According to Michael Comans aka Vasudevacharya, Adi Shankara considered perception and inference as a primary most reliable epistemic means, and where these means to knowledge help one gain what is beneficial and to avoid what is harmful. There is no need for or wisdom in referring to the scriptures. In certain matters related to metaphysics and ethics, says Shankara, the testimony and wisdom in scriptures such as the Vedas and the Upanishads become important. Adi Shankara cautioned against cherry picking a phrase or verse out of context from Vedic literature, and remarks in the opening chapter of his Brahmasutra Bhasya that the Anvaya theme or purport of any treatise can only be correctly understood if one attends to the Samanvayat Tatparya Linga, that is, six characteristics of the text under consideration. One, the common in Upakrama introductory statement and upasamhara conclusions two abhyasa message repeated three apravada unique proposition or novelty four phala fruit or result derived five arthavada explained meaning praised point and six yukti verifiable reasoning while this methodology has roots in the theoretical works of Naya school of Hinduism, Shankara consolidated and applied it with his unique exegetical method called Nvaya Vyatirika, which states that for proper understanding one must 
except only meanings that are compatible with all characteristics, and exclude meanings that are incompatible with any. Hacker and Phillips note that this insight into rules of reasoning and hierarchical emphasis on epistemic steps is, "...doubtlessly the suggestion," of Shankara in Brahma Sutra, an insight that flowers in the works of his companion and disciple Padmapada. Merrill Wolfe states that Shankara accepts Vedas and Upanishads as a source of knowledge as he develops his philosophical theses, yet he never rests his case on the ancient texts, rather proves each thesis, point by point using pramanas epistemology, reason and experience. Adi Shankara, in his text Upadesa Sahasri, discourages ritual worship such as ablations to Deva God, because that assumes the self within is different from the Brahman. The doctrine of difference is wrong, asserts Shankara, because, "...he who knows the Brahman is one and he is another, does not know Brahman." However, Shankara also asserts that self-knowledge is realized when one's mind is purified by an ethical life that observes yamas such as ahimsa non-injury, non-violence to others in body, mind and thoughts and niyamas. Rituals and rites such as yajna a fire ritual, asserts Shankara, can help draw and prepare the mind for the journey to self-knowledge. He emphasizes the need for ethics such as akrodha and yamas during brahmacharya, stating the lack of ethics as causes that prevent students from attaining knowledge. Adi Shankara has been varyingly called as influenced by Shaivism and Shaktism. However, his works and philosophy suggest greater overlap with Vaishnavism, influence of Yoga school of Hinduism, but most distinctly his Advaitin convictions with a monistic view of spirituality. Philosophy and practice Topic. Knowledge of Brahman Adi Shankara systematized the works of preceding philosophers. His system marks a turn from realism to idealism. His Advaita non -dualism interpretation of the Sruti postulates the identity of the self and the whole Brahman. According to Adi Shankara, the one unchanging entity Brahman alone is real, while changing entities do not have absolute existence. The key source texts for this interpretation, as for all schools of Vedanta, are the Prasthanatrayi the canonical texts consisting of the Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita and the Brahma Sutras. Topic. Practice Advaita Vedanta is based on Sastra scriptures. Yukti, reason, and Anubhava, experiential knowledge, and aided by karmas, spiritual practices. Starting from childhood, when learning has to start, the philosophy has to be a way of life. Shankara's primary objective was to understand and explain how moksha is achievable in this life, what it is means to be liberated, free and a jivanmukta. His philosophical thesis was that jivanmukti is self-realization, the awareness of oneness of self and the universal spirit called Brahman. Shankara considered the purity and steadiness of mind achieved in yoga as an aid to gaining moksha knowledge, but such yogic state of mind cannot in itself give rise to such knowledge. To Shankara, that knowledge of Brahman springs only from inquiry into the teachings of the Upanishads. The method of yoga, encouraged in Shankara's teachings notes Michael Komans aka Vasudevacharya, includes withdrawal of mind from sense objects as in Patanjali's system, but it is not complete thought suppression, instead it is a "...meditative exercise of withdrawal from the particular and identification with the universal, leading to contemplation of oneself as the most universal, namely, consciousness." Describing Shankara's style of yogic practice, Komans aka Vasudevacharya writes, The type of yoga which Sankara presents here is a method of merging, as it were, the particular vasesa into the general samanya. For example, diverse sounds are merged in the sense of hearing, which has greater generality insofar as the sense of hearing is the locus of all sounds. The sense of hearing is merged into the mind, whose nature consists of thinking about things, and the mind is in turn merged into the intellect, which Sankara then says is made into mere cognition vijnanamatra, that is, all particular cognitions resolve into their universal, which is cognition as such, thought without any particular object. And that in turn is merged into its universal, mere consciousness upon which everything previously referred to ultimately depends. Shankara rejected those yoga system variations that suggest complete thought suppression leads to liberation, as well the view that the Shrutis teach liberation as something apart from the knowledge of the oneness of the self. 
Knowledge alone and insights relating to true nature of things, taught Shankara, is what liberates. He placed great emphasis on the study of the Upanishads, emphasizing them as necessary and sufficient means to gain self-liberating knowledge. Sankara also emphasized the need for and the role of guru acharya, teacher, for such knowledge. Topic. Shankara's Vedanta and Mahayana Buddhism Shankara's Vedanta shows similarities with Mahayana Buddhism. Opponents have even accused Shankara of being a crypto Buddhist, a qualification which is rejected by the Advaita Vedanta tradition, given the differences between these two schools. According to Shankara, a major difference between Advaita and Mahayana Buddhism are their views on Atman and Brahman. According to both Aloy and Jayatilik, more differences can be discerned. Topic. Differences Topic. Atman According to Shankara, Hinduism believes in the existence of Atman, while Buddhism denies this. Shankara citing Katha Upanishad, asserted that the Hindu Upanishad starts with stating its objective as this is the investigation whether after the death of man the soul exists, some assert the soul exists, the soul does not exist, assert others. Quote, At the end, states Shankara, the same Upanishad concludes with the words. It exists Buddhists and Lokayatas, wrote Shankara, assert that soul does not exist, there are also differences in the understanding of what liberation means. Nirvana, a term more often used in Buddhism, is the liberating realization and acceptance that there is no self anatman. Moksha, a term more common in Hinduism, is liberating realization and acceptance of self and universal soul, the consciousness of one's oneness with all existence and understanding the whole universe as the self. Topic. Logic versus revelation Saint Sherbatsky in 1927 criticized Shankara for demanding the use of logic from Madhyamika Buddhists, while himself resorting to revelation as a source of knowledge. Sirkar in 1933 offered a different perspective and stated, Sankara recognizes the value of the law of contrariety and self-alienation from the standpoint of idealistic logic, and it has consequently been possible for him to integrate appearance with reality. Recent scholarship states that Shankara's arguments on revelation are about a pta vikana Sanskrit, aptavakana sayings of the wise, relying on word, testimony of past or present reliable experts. It is part of his and Advaita Vedanta's epistemological foundation. Advaita Vedanta school considers such testimony epistemically valid asserting that a human being needs to know numerous facts, and with the limited time and energy available, he can learn only a fraction of those facts and truths directly. Shankara considered the teachings in the Vedas and Upanishads as a pta vikana and a valid source of knowledge. He suggests the importance of teacher-disciple relationship on combining logic and revelation to attain moksha in his text Upadashasahasri. Anantanand Rambachan and others state Shankara methodology did not rely exclusively on Vedic statements, but included a range of logical methods, reasoning methodology and pramanas. Topic. Similarities Despite Adi Shankara's criticism of certain schools of Mahayana Buddhism, Shankara's philosophy shows strong similarities with the Mahayana Buddhist philosophy which he attacks. According to S. N. Dasgupta, Shankara and his followers borrowed much of their dialectic form of criticism from the Buddhists. His Brahman was very much like the Sunya of Nagarjuna. The debts of Shankara to the self-luminosity of the Vijnanavada Buddhism can hardly be overestimated. There seems to be much truth in the accusations against Shankara by Vijnana Bhisu and others that he was a hidden Buddhist himself. I am led to think that Shankara's philosophy is largely a compound of Vijnanavada and Sunyavada Buddhism with the Upanishad notion of the permanence of self superadded. According to Mudgal, Shankara's Advaita and the Buddhist Madhyamaka view of ultimate reality is compatible because they are both transcendental, indescribable, non dual, and only arrived at through a via negativa. Neti neti. Mudgal concludes therefore that the difference between Sunyavada Mahayana philosophy of Buddhism and Advaita philosophy of Hinduism may be a matter of emphasis, not of kind. Topic. Historical and cultural impact 
Topic: Historical context. Shankara lived in the time of the so-called late classical Hinduism which lasted from 650 till 1100 CE. This era was one of political instability that followed Gupta dynasty and King Harsha of the 7th century CE. It was a time of social and cultural change as the ideas of Buddhism, Jainism and various traditions within Hinduism were competing for members. Buddhism in particular had emerged as a powerful influence in India's spiritual traditions in the first 700 years of the first millennium CE. Shankara, and his contemporaries, made a significant contribution in understanding Buddhism and the ancient Vedic traditions, then transforming the extant ideas, particularly reforming the Vedanta tradition of Hinduism, making it India's most important tradition for more than a thousand years. Topic. Influence on Hinduism Shankara has an unparalleled status in the tradition of Advaita Vedanta. He travelled all over India to help restore the study of the Vedas. His teachings and tradition form the basis of Smartism and have influenced San Mat lineages. He introduced the Pankayatana form of worship, the simultaneous worship of five deities, Ganesha, Surya, Vishnu, Shiva and Devi. Shankara explained that all deities were but different forms of the one Brahman, the invisible supreme being. Benedict Ashley credits Adi Shankara for unifying two seemingly disparate philosophical doctrines in Hinduism, namely Atman and Brahman. Iziva states Shankara's influence included reforming Hinduism, founding monasteries, edifying disciples, disputing opponents, and engaging in philosophic activity that, in the eyes of Indian tradition, help revive the orthodox idea of the unity of all beings. And Vedanta thought, prior to Shankara, views similar to his already existed, but did not occupy a dominant position within the Vedanta. According to Nakamura, it was only after Shankara that, "...the theologians of the various sects of Hinduism utilized Vedanta philosophy to a greater or lesser degree to form the basis of their doctrines," whereby, "...its theoretical influence upon the whole of Indian society became final and definitive." Topic. Critical assessment Some scholars doubt Shankara's early influence in India. The Buddhist scholar Richard E. King states, Although it is common to find Western scholars and Hindus arguing that Sankaracharya was the most influential and important figure in the history of Hindu intellectual thought, this does not seem to be justified by the historical evidence. According to King and Ruderman, until the 10th century Shankara was overshadowed by his older contemporary Mandana Misra, the latter considered to be the major representative of Advaita. Other scholars state that the historical records for this period are unclear, and little reliable information is known about the various contemporaries and disciples of Shankara. For example, Advaita tradition holds that Mandana Misra is the same person as Shursvara, a name he adopted after he became a disciple of Shankara after a public debate which Shankara won. Some scholars state that Mandana Misra and Shursvara must have been two different scholars, because their scholarship is quite different. Other scholars, on the other hand, state that Mandana Misra and Shankara do share views, because both emphasize that Brahman Atman can not be directly perceived, rather it is discovered and defined through elimination of division duality of any kind. The self-realization soul knowledge, suggest both Mandana Misra and Shankara, can be described cataphatically positive liberation, freedom through knowledge, Jivanmukti Moksha as well as apophatically removal of ignorance, negation of duality, negation of division between people or souls or spirit matter. While both share core premises, states Iziva, they differ in several ways, with Mandana Misra holding Vedic knowledge as an absolute and end in itself, while Shankara holds Vedic knowledge and all religious rites as subsidiary and means to the human longing for liberation, freedom and moksha. Several scholars suggest that the historical fame and cultural influence of Shankara grew centuries later, particularly during the era of Muslim invasions and consequent devastation of India. Many of Shankara's biographies were created and published in and after 14th century, such as the widely cited Vidyaranya's Sankara Vijaya. Vidyaranya, also known as Madhava, who was the twelfth Jagadguru of the Sringeri Sarada Pitham from 1380 to 1386, inspired the re-creation of the Hindu Vijayanagara Empire of South India in response to the devastation caused by the Islamic Delhi Sultanate. 
He and his brothers, suggest Paul Hacker and other scholars, wrote about Sankara as well as extensive Advaitic commentaries on Vedas and Dharma. Vidyaranya was a minister in Vijayanagara Empire and enjoyed royal support, and his sponsorship and methodical efforts helped establish Shankara as a rallying symbol of values, and helped spread historical and cultural influence of Shankara's Vedanta philosophies. Vidyaranya also helped establish monasteries mathas to expand the cultural influence of Shankara. It may be these circumstances, suggest scholars, that grew and credited Adi Shankara for various Hindu festive traditions such as the Kumbh Mela, one of the world's largest periodic religious pilgrimages. Mathas Shankara is regarded as the founder of the Dasanami Sampradaya of Hindu monasticism and Sanmata of Smarta tradition. He unified the theistic sects into a common framework of Shanmata system. Advaita Vedanta is, at least in the West, primarily known as a philosophical system. But it is also a tradition of renunciation. Philosophy and renunciation are closely related. Most of the notable authors in the Advaita tradition were members of the Sannyasa tradition, and both sides of the tradition share the same values, attitudes and metaphysics. Shankara, himself considered to be an incarnation of Shiva, established the Dashanami Sampradaya, organizing a section of the Ekadandi monks under an umbrella grouping of ten names. Several other Hindu monastic and Ekadandi traditions remained outside the organization of the Dasanamis. Adi Sankara organized the Hindu monks of these ten sects or names under four mathas Sanskrit, Matha monasteries, with the headquarters at Dvaraka in the west, Jagannatha Puri in the east, Sringeri in the south and Bhadrikashrama in the north. Each math was headed by one of his four main disciples, who each continues the Vedanta Sampradaya. Yet, according to Pandi, these mathas were not established by Shankara himself, but were originally ashrams established by Vibhandaka and his son Rasasurnga. Shankara inherited the ashrams at Dvaraka and Sringeri, and shifted the ashram at Sarngavarapura to Badarakas Rama, and the ashram at Angadisa to Jagannatha Puri. The Advaita Sampradaya is not a Saiva sect, despite the historical links with Shaivism. Advaitins are non-sectarian, and they advocate worship of Shiva and Visnu equally with that of the other deities of Hinduism, like Sakti, Ganapati and others. Nevertheless, contemporary Sankarakaryas have more influence among Saiva communities than among Vaisnava communities. The greatest influence of the gurus of the Advaita tradition has been among followers of the Smarta tradition, who integrate the domestic Vedic ritual with devotional aspects of Hinduism. According to Nakamura, these mathas contributed to the influence of Shankara, which was due to institutional factors. The mathas which he built exist until today, and preserve the teachings and influence of Shankara, while the writings of other scholars before him came to be forgotten with the passage of time. The table below gives an overview of the four Amnaya mathas founded by Adi Shankara, and their details. <laughs> Smarta tradition Traditionally, Shankara is regarded as the greatest teacher and reformer of the Smarta. According to Alf Hiltbeitel, Shankara established the nondualist interpretation of the Upanishads as the touchstone of a revived Smarta tradition. Practically, Shankara fostered a rapprochement between Advaita and Smarta orthodoxy, which by his time had not only continued to defend the Varnasramadharma theory as defining the path of Karman, but had developed the practice of Pankayatanapuha five shrine worship, as a solution to varied and conflicting devotional practices. Thus one could worship any one of five deities Vishnu, Shiva, Durga, Surya, Ganesha as one's Istadavada deity of choice. Topic. Film In 1977 Jagadguru Adasankaran, a Malayalam film directed by P. Bhaskaran was released in which Murali Mohan plays the role of adult Adi Sankaran and Master Ragu plays childhood. In 1983 a film directed by G. V. Iyer named Adi Shankaracharya was premiered, the first film ever made entirely in Sanskrit language in which all of Adi Shankaracharya's works were compiled. The movie received the Indian National Film Awards for Best Film, Best Screenplay, Best Cinematography and Best Audiography. In 2013, a film Sri Jagadguru Adi Sankara directed by J.K. Bharavi in Telugu language was completed and released. See also 
Topic Notes Topic References Topic Sources Topic Printed Sources Topic Web Sources Topic Further reading Ingalls, Daniel H. H. 1954. Samkara's Arguments Against the Buddhists. Philosophy East and West. Hawaii, University of Hawaii Press, 3, 4, 291-306. doi, 101397 JSTOR 1397287. Mishra, Parameshwar Nath 2003. Era of Adi Shankaracharya 507 BC to 475 BC. Howra Samskriti Rakshak Parishad, West Bengal. Mishra, Parameshwar Nath. Amit Kalreka. Three vols, in Hindi, Howra Samskriti Rakshak Parishad, West Bengal. Succession of Shankaracharyas, a chronology from Gaudapada onwards. Regal, David. 2001. The Original Sankaracharya. PDF. Fohat, 5, 3, 57 60, 70 71. Frank Whaling. 1979, Sankara and Buddhism, Journal of Indian Philosophy, Vol. 7, No. 1, pages 1 42. Sri Shankaracharya in Cambodia? by S. Srikanta Sastri. External links Works by Adi Shankara at Project Gutenberg Adi Shankara at Curly Works by or about Adi Shankara at Internet Archive Majors Works of Adi Shankara Volumes 1-20, Sanskrit and English Translations A Note on the Date of Sankara Adi Sankaracharya by S. Srikanta Sastri Sankara and the Vedic Tradition J. J. Navone, Philosophy and Phenomenological Research, Vol. 17, No. 2 Dec. 1956, pages 248–255 Sankara and the Buddhists Was Sankara a Crypto-Buddhist? S. Biderman, Journal of Indian Philosophy, Vol. 6, Issue 4 Dec. 1978, pages 405–413 Dr. Richard De Smet and Sankara's Advaita T. S. Rukmani 2003, Journal of Hindu-Christian Studies, Vol. 16, Article 6. A Questioning Approach, Learning from Sankara's Pedagogic Techniques, Jacqueline Hurst, Contemporary Education Dialogue, Vol. 2, No. 2, pages 137–169.